Our goal for today is to make a good engineering decision. This process was previewed for you by Dr. Raymond in the Engineering Decision Making and Engineering Design Process Talks at the beginning of the course. Let's do a little bit of a fun example. Our company needs a new CEO. Who shall we hire? One option is Queen Elizabeth I. Our second option is Thomas Edison. And our final option is James K. Polk. First, we need to think through what are the important criteria on which we will be assessing these different options. You should have thought about these already in your class project because they are the same uh, criteria you've been measuring as you go. And then, here are some good criteria for our CEO. We want someone who is an excellent leader, has excellent leadership experience. We want someone who has a low expected salary because maybe we don't have an infinite amount of money to pay them. And we want someone who is very good at public speaking. So the first thing we're going to do is decide upon the weighting factor. What does that mean? That means what relative importance do these three characteristics have? Keep in mind you're going to use more than three characteristics. But in this case, for an example, we're just going to use three. So I think, and this should be debated among your team for your project, that leadership is in fact going to be the most important thing here. So I'm going to give that a five. That will have a five weighting factor. After that comes public speaking. I'm going to give that one a three. And then finally, while we don't want these people paid too much, if they're really, really good, they're worth it. So we're going to give that a one. The weighting is very important because it describes the relative importance of these criteria. If you give everything a five, it's the same thing as giving everything a one. So think very carefully about what's going to be the most important. Also, think very carefully about if there are any uh, constraints. Remember, if you violate a constraint, you can't use it at all. So, for example, if uh, we have a baby here, which I don't at the moment, but if I had a picture of a baby, the baby wouldn't be able to speak and, in fact, would violate the constraint that they have some ability to do public speaking. So that person should not even be considered. Likewise, for your salad dressing, if you have something that is, for example, poisonous, that doesn't even make it to the point of being in the rubric because it violates one of your constraints. Keep that in mind before you go to the trouble of setting up the rubric. Next, I'm going to need a way to score these such that the numbers come out comparable. So for example, oh, and also the way I score things must be logical, must be defensible. Uh, usually you like it to be based upon measured values if you're doing something scientific. Uh, <coughs> or you could have it based upon the results of uh, quality control, surveys, uh, how people react to it. In general, you don't want to just be going by opinion, but sometimes that's what you're going to do too. So for example, in the realm of leadership experience, we're going to go with the years, the number of years that person was a leader. And then we're going to scale it to be a similar value to the other categories. For salary, uh, we should uh, go by what the actual salary was, those people made. But again, we're going to have to scale this with a function because, and this is important here, the person who is best in salary is the person who likes, makes the least money. So we need something to invert their salary numbers in order to give us the results we want. And then finally, for speaking, how shall we quantify that? Well, let's say we use something called a Likert scale. You've seen these before on, for example, course evaluations or other surveys. Something where five is excellent or very good or surpasses expectations, and one is poor or not very good at all. We could have a panel of people listen to the public speeches given by these three individuals and give them a rating. That means people could be tied. Let's start with the most complicated one first, which is going to be salary. It's probably fair to say that Queen Elizabeth made the most money, given that she was worth the gross national product of the British Empire at the time. Now, that's a little bit hard to quantify. I'm going to call it 
for right now, given the time and the day and age that we're talking about, we're going to call it $10 million a year. And Thomas Jefferson averaged out over the time he was working, could be said to make in today's dollars about $1 million a year. And James K. Polk, let's assume he would make the same thing as the president makes right now, which, to keep it all in the same scale, is $400,000 or 4.4 times 10 to the 6th. Now, how shall we turn this into something that inverts? A way to do it, now there's many ways to do it, but this way seems to scale well, is you take the absolute value of the person's salary minus the biggest salary on the list, and then divide that by the biggest salary on the list. And that'll give you a number between 0 and 1. In the case of Queen Elizabeth, that in fact gives us 0, because she's the biggest salary. For Thomas Edison, we get 0.9. And for James K. Polk, we get 0.96. What we do with this number is we then multiply it by our weighting factor, which you will, pardon me, recall in this case is 1. So our final weight, our final weighted value, is 0 for Queen Elizabeth, 0.9 for Thomas Edison, and 0.96 for James K. Polk. Now let's go on to something else, like speaking. Say we had a panel uh, that listened to these people speak several speeches over the course of their career and gave them a 5 if they were truly excellent, a 4 if they were pretty good, a 3 if they were neither good nor bad, a 2 if they were not really good at all, and 1 if they were downright awful. What would those values be? Well, in this case, we know Queen Elizabeth was a very motivational ruler, so she got a 5. Thomas Edison was a great salesman, but also a bit of an engineer, and he could be not the most lovable boss. So he's going to come in somewhat lower. Uh, we're going to give him a 3. James K. Polk was known as Napoleon of the Stump. He was a great persuasive speaker, but not as terrific as Queen Elizabeth, so he's going to get a 4. In this case, there's no further scaling involved. 5, 3, 4... This is what I'm using these little broken up squares for, by the way, as you can see. But you uh, can do this in a spreadsheet and use as many squares as you want. And then I'm going to multiply together my weighting factor and my score for their speech and fill that in. Finally, we come to years as a leader. And in this case, we are again going to need to do something to normalize because of how large the numbers are that we are using. Thomas Jefferson was inventing things in his own lab for pretty much 55 years. Uh, Queen Elizabeth was ruler of an empire for 45 years. And James K. Polk led the United States for a mere four years. A good way to normalize this might be to divide by the largest number and write down the fraction. So that's what I'm going to do. As you can see, this gets us some pretty interesting numbers, but it lands us, when multiplied by its weighting factor, with Queen Elizabeth scoring about a 4, Thomas Jefferson scoring 5, and James K. Thomas Jefferson, Thomas Edison, I mean, and James K. Polk scoring a whopping, let's round it up to 0.4. Now, let's add it up and see what happens. Keeping in mind that I should only be using one significant digit, we get 19, 14.9, and 13.4. So we have a clear winner in Queen Elizabeth I as the CEO for our company. Now, if you go through this exercise and get something that comes out tied, what that means is you probably have two things that are too close to call based upon the criteria that you're using. It either means you need to reassess your weighing, or you need to go back through your numbers and be sure you did your calculation correctly. Or that these things are honestly tied, flip a coin, go with whichever one you like. Note that there's some error in these measurements. So if you have, if I had done this and something had come out as a 20 and something else had come out as a 19, those would be essentially tied too.